So now we can move on to the mass distribution. Now this is a rather important one. And this dialogue has, I guess, several options available. So this essentially makes up for all the missing weight from electrical, piping, anything that's not modeled structure in the ship that should be part of your, your light ship. It'll all get put in here in basically a smeared mass. And Maestro will take care of distributing that mass to all of the existing nodes in the model. Uh, there's an algorithm that will apply that mass in different ways, depending on what you want. Now, some of the options that are available here are to use either a, a lump mass, a linear density, or a step density. And quite often you'll be using the lump mass, mainly because it's fairly convenient. And a lot of times, you know, the weight report just gives you CGs and weights for various sections of the ship along the, the length of the hull. So you'd put in basically the CG and the uh, associated mass. So in our Word document here, we have a couple different mass distributions available. I created the target light ship mass distribution, as well as the target full load mass distribution, depending on which you might have. We've, we've gotten both in the past. If you have basically the full load mass distribution over the length of the ship, uh, that makes it very easy to model all of this stuff because Maestro will essentially do it for you. You can give it the final mass distribution in here and Maestro will do the work for you to remove all of the non light ship parts. Basically, that's what this group box here is distribution as either an additional mass distribution or the final mass distribution. I guess each of these is separate. You know, you can have you know, a lump mass distribution either as the additional or the final. Although if it's a final distribution, it's got to be lump. You can't do the linear or step densities. And basically what they are is, you know, lump is, as you would imagine, just several mass groupings or whatever along the length of the ship. In the case of our sample here, we have 21 essentially locations along the length of the ship and what the, the weight is. So our CG and mass along the length of the ship. If we have a linear density distribution, basically we get, we're giving it the the starting location and the ending location of that segment, and we tell it what the mass is in kilograms per meter at the start and at the end of that segment. And it'll basically sort of create that curve along the length. The other option is uh, using density, but as a step function. So you give it the start and end locations and the mass in kilograms per meter, but it'll be constant along that length of the hull. So depending on how you got the information in, uh, from your weight report, quite often it'll just be these lump distributions using stations, or if you knew exactly how it was broken down, actually that's more the segment definition here. I guess the both of these being the densities, you're not gonna get you know, mass per meter in a weight report typically, but the option is available here for assigning your mass distribution in those ways. Typically, you're, you're going to be using the lump. I guess the options there are station and segment. And station is the traditional lumped mass where it's a, a mass and a CG, those pairs along the hull. If you have segment definitions, you can define you know, similar with the densities at the start and end location of each segment. You give it the CG of where that mass centrally is in that segment and what the mass is for the segment. So if you knew your weight report was, you know, they broke it down by everything from, you know, station zero to station one, and you had this CG and, and mass, you can enter it that way. If you know the, the boundaries of how they broke up the length of the vessel to compute the weight report, you can use that. If not, you can always use just the, the standard lump distribution with a single point and mass. Now Maestro will, based on what those masses are along the length of the hull, each one of those points, Maestro isn't going to just distribute the mass at that particular X location. It will distribute it along the length between that one and the next one. And it will try and, I guess, keep that CG for that mass. You know, it'll be at that X location, but it'll distribute along the available nodes in the hull there. It'll try to keep them in a similar relationship with the modeled structural mass, um, essentially, you know, keep it proportional to that. But 
you can also set a CG target for your mass distribution. And that's right now we have it set to none. So it's going to keep things in a fairly close proportion to the modeled you know, structural weight. But if you want and you know you have a target CG, you can tell it I want to match a specific you know, VCG and Maestro will try and push that additional mass distribution either up or down to try to hit your target VCG. Uh, there's also an option if you want to hit VCG and an inertia. Typically, we'll either use none or just the CG and give it a vertical center. This CG utility is fairly crude. I mean, you give it uh, you know, your target VCG and TCG for the ship, and you can give it the weight VCG and TCG of either the other weight items or the distributed weight. It'll compute the other for you. But typically, you know, what we already know most of the information we we want for the overall distribution. This is an important point here. Enter the full model value for a half model. So regardless of whether you're working on a half model as we are, or if you're working on the full model, you're going to enter these masses as if it was the full ship. Now for a tank definition, and actually let me go back to that quickly. Load one, the volume groups here. If we were modeling, modeling with mass where it cautions you, let me modify that. Yes, because it, it, it found a centerline tank, so it does tell you to make sure you only enter half of the mass for that tank since it's going to be mirrored. That's if you're giving it the specific weight. Since we were using percent full with the fraction there, uh, that doesn't really apply. So let's go ahead and we will put in, well, we'll do this two different ways. One, we are going to use the, well, let's say we get the target light ship mass distribution. So that's not particularly useful for us right now because we have this still water load case and we already have our tank volumes in there. We have our cargo loads for these plate areas. So using the target light ship, if we try to make that the final, it's going to subtract out all of those volume groups. So we need to basically compute how much additional mass we need in order to hit this target light ship. So in order to do that, and this was sort of the older way that you would do this in Maestro, you had to come in and figure out how much additional mass you needed, what that distribution was along the length of the hull. And that's why I guess this option for a final mass distribution was added. It essentially automates a lot of this. So we'll do it the original way first, which is uh, a little more work and then the newer way, because depending on what information you have, you may need to do it one way or the other. So we'll start off with creating a new load case that we're going to call light ship. So we'll go ahead and copy an existing load case. If we didn't, we'd have to recreate everything, and you add all the tanks and the engines and all that. So we'll copy the still water load case, and we're going to call this one ship. Now, if we come in here, we'll see, oh, we have all of our tanks already defined, but our light ship doesn't have any. We could either put zeros in for all of the values here, or what's a little easier is to just delete the rows. Now, you want to be careful here because this delete is actually to delete the load case, I believe. So if we hit that, yeah, that deletes the entire load case, whereas delete rows will just delete the contents of this particular tab, the volume groups. Now, if you have a row highlighted, it'll just delete a row. If you don't have anything highlighted and you hit delete, it deletes all the rows. So you essentially reset your volume groups here. Now, we don't have module weights, section weights. We do want to keep the engine weight. That's part of our light ship. But our plate mass groups are for cargo. So we're going to get rid of those as well. And we don't have any bay weights, and we didn't put in a distribution yet. Now, if we go back, we can see everything is still empty. But if I were to close this dialog and reopen it, I have my light ship load case here. It was created. If I come into the mass, you can see all of my tanks are back. I had deleted them, 
and I switched from one tab to the other, but I didn't hit the modify button to commit that change. So we'll delete all of these rows. I'm going to delete all of the cargo entries here as well, and I'll hit modify when I do that. And now if we close this dialog and open it up, my tanks are back but my cargo plates are not. So it's actually on each tab, once you make the modification, you have to hit modify either before or after you come back. I mean, you, you saw originally when we came in here, we switched from the other tabs and had deleted things, came back and they were still deleted, but we didn't hit modify. So we closed the dialog, reopened it and they were back. Certainly if you hit modify before you leave the tab, the change is committed. I think you can hit modify on that tab at any time before you close the dialog, but I'm not positive of that. You just get in the habit eventually of hitting modify before you leave the tab and it'll sort of become automatic. So now to actually enter this distribution, we know what our final lightship distribution is. And right now, all we have accounted for is our structural weight, and our engine weight. We've gotten rid of the tanks, we've gotten rid of the cargo plate loads, and we don't have any additional mass distribution. So what we would do to figure out what the additional mass that, that's still needed is, uh, we know what our final lightship distribution is. So let's measure our modeled structural weight, including the engine, and figure out what's missing. So we'll do hull view gross weight. And in the output dialog here, you can see what this distribution is along the length. So we can just copy this out of here. Now you have to right click and hit copy because if I were to highlight all of that and hit control C, when I come into Excel and I try to paste that data, what control C copies is an image of the screen. You have to use the right click and copy to copy out of the output window. And then I can come in here and paste it in. Now this is my model mass distribution. And from the data that we already had, we know what our target light ship is. So we'll copy that and put it in here. So in order to create what's missing, all we have to do is take our final minus what's already modeled But you'll see, you know, this is what the additional mass distribution that I would need. We had our target light ship, and then we just measured all of our modeled mass and our fixed values for like the engine that are part of the, everything that was part of the light ship. And we just computed what was missing along the length. And, you know, since we use the same station locations for both of these, now obviously if the data we had was different, we could have used the, uh, that user defined setting and typed in all of those X values to get the corresponding values coming out of Maestro so that we could compute this. And I believe if we look in on the last page of that loading data, we should have basically these values. I think there are some small differences in here. So it's more reliable to, to do the full model. And I think this is probably just because not many people are doing the half models. So when I think the final mass distribution was added, that option, it's possible that something slipped in that caused an error. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference in there. I'm, I'm not getting exact values, so we need to look into that. But these values were computed using the full model. And uh, but you can see they were fairly close, but essentially this is my additional mass distribution that would be required. So let's we'll finish this out, this process, and then I'll show you when we do the final mass distribution, what happens when you try and pick a target CG and why the full model is a little more reliable right now.
I'm sure you'd be modeling your full model anyway, so this wouldn't be an issue, but just something to be aware of. So we'll come into the mass distribution here and well, you have nowhere to put the data right now. So if you right click, you can say add one row or add 100 rows. The easiest thing to do is just add 100 rows because any of those are left blank will just get deleted. We'll come in here and we have our X values and our required values that we just computed. Although, let's grab them out of the loading document since that's what you're using. So you can just grab these values and we'll just copy them. Come into Maestro and you go into the upper, the first X cell and then just hit paste. And you can see you have all these extras, but as soon as you hit modify, the table gets truncated to just where you have the data. Now we're doing a lump distribution with additional mass. So this gets added onto our existing structure and it's the station type, not segment. So if we close this dialog, we can turn on the water plane and rebalance the vessel. Now it actually looks a little light because this water plane should be up here. And the reason for that is I only model my light ship. I don't have any tank uh, loads in here yet. So we'll come back in here and we will change over to the still water and we will add that mass distribution to our still water. So let me just modify the still water and when we balance the ship, now it says it was already balanced. Do you want to rebalance? We'll say yes. Because we didn't make any changes to the light ship since it was last balanced and it's rebalancing the loading conditions. Now we're displaying light ship. Oh, that's why it was doing that. So you can tell it to rebalance all load cases at once if you want. Otherwise, it's only going to rebalance the, the current loading condition. And that's the water line that we're looking for. So just a little bit of transom immersion. So going back into the Word document, we're going to say, okay, our uh, weight report gave us the target full load mass distribution. So for the fully loaded hull, we have what the total mass distribution is with everything on board. So we'll come in and we'll change our still water loading condition. We'll change that mass distribution to instead of only show the additional mass, we're going to tell it we're going to give it the final mass distribution. And what it will do is remove automatically all of our tank loads, all of the modeled weight and defined weights from all of these other groups, you know, the plate groups, the node groups, the, the volume groups, plus all the modeled structure, it'll automatically subtract that from this distribution and figure out what is needed and apply it over the length of the ship. Now, there may be, I don't think it happens in this mass distribution, but let's try when you tell it to give a weight summary. Actually, no, let me do the gross weight distribution. And if we look at the text in here, I'm going to clear this so we only see the text from doing the gross weight distribution. So everything, I guess, was working fine there. You can run into a situation where your modeled weight exceeds what you're telling it should be at that station. So in effect, you're telling it you need to add a negative weight and Maestro will warn you about those. It'll complain about those because it can't remove weight from the modeled structure. So if you know we told it at station zero, we're supposed to have 80,000 kilograms. Well, if we told it we're only supposed to have 30,000 kilograms, but there were already 40,000 that were modeled structure, it can't remove 10,000 kilograms from the model. So it'll warn you about that, that your modeled weight exceeds your desired weight, and it'll just 
ignore the additional one. It will essentially just set this to zero. I guess for the final distribution, it won't set it to zero. It will use only the modeled structural weight. It won't add anything else because you've already got too much. So that happens occasionally, typically towards the bow and the stern. But let me look at the weight summary here and we'll see what the CG is. So 7.51, if we give it a new target CG, and we'll go back to 7.75. See the weight summary. It went up to 8.48. Now, the other thing is if we do the hydrostatic balance, that doesn't look right. So I had gone in and checked the gross weight distribution. Now, when you give it a target CG, you get a little bit extra in this display for the gross mass distribution or gross weight distribution. When you have it set to none, let me clear this, and you say gross weight, you only get what the gross weight is along the length of the ship. And that looks pretty normal. That, that is about what it should be. When you give it a target VCG, you get some a lot of extra data. You get this, you know, it tells you what the additional mass distribution that was required. Essentially, after it did all the subtractions of your structural weight, your tanks, and so forth, this is what it came up with as what was needed, and then gives you your final distribution here. And you can see something went a little wrong there. We got way too much weight back aft. And if we look at the weight summary, yeah, our CG is much higher than what we told it we wanted. And that's when, and I knew this was not an issue. You know, my store has been doing this just fine, but typically we're working on full models. We, we don't normally use half models. You don't see them as, as often as you used to. So I came in here and I just said, let's mirror the model. Let's make this into a full model. So, and I'm gonna put it in a separate part in the tree so that we can get rid of it easily but we're gonna tell it to mirror the groups and mirror the loads. And we don't have any restraints, so we don't have to worry about that. You can check it or not, but we want to mirror all of our groups, including all those volume groups and mirror any of the loads like the engines and the cargo plate loads that we have. And yeah, it tells you about coincident nodes, you know, from all the center line stuff. And we can see we have a new section in here for our mirrored structure. If we look in our volume groups, we have mirror versions of all of our tanks. If we were to come into the mass volume dialog, all of our tanks have doubled. But all of the loading for them you know, is exactly what it was. We've got the mirror of the engine, the mirror of the cargo, and when we look at the distribution, well, our distribution is always for the full ship. In fact, that little message about using the full ship data is no longer there since we're no longer using a symmetric model. So we can close this. And if we rebalance, and we didn't change anything. I only opened that dialog and we looked at it. We didn't change anything. And all we did was go from a symmetric model to actually mirroring the model. But now you can see the water plane is back to where it should be. And if we redo that gross weight distribution, it's back to what you'd expect it to be. And if we do the weight summary, 7.74995. So it pretty much hit exactly what we told that we wanted our overall VCG to be. We told it we wanted 7.75 as our final VCG and it essentially took our final mass distribution, subtracted out all of those volume weights, all the nodal weights, the plate weights over those areas, and the distribution of all the modeled structure to come up with the remaining mass distribution, which shows you here what the additional weight was, or what the additional weight distribution was. And it looks like the additional weight distribution had to have a CG or a VCG of 9.66 in order to achieve the desired 7.75.